What's up? Uh, so this is uh, cheap filmmaking take number two. Uh, we're working on some other stuff. I'm Jason. Um, I team up with my friends and my daughters, and we just have fun making whatever extremely low budget um, film or sport or whatever it is uh, that we can uh, with nothing to do here. So. Um, uh, I think you should have just watched my uh, my pretty hokey uh, little screen test there with an A-wing. Um, this is something that we needed to put together for, well, it, it was some, some stuff that I haven't done yet, so I needed to kind of test out what I thought would happen uh, with the editing process with spaceships and space and, and uh, bringing that stuff kind of to life. Um, and that's what this whole, the, that little uh, segment was to do, was to uh, figure that stuff out and what it was going to take to make some good looking stuff. <laughs> I, I get it that that looked a little hokey, but um, I learned the lessons that I needed to, uh, to kind of go to the next level for when we make, um, of course, our project named, code named Gone to Texas, which is uh, gonna be a feature length uh, indie flick uh, that myself and uh, my friends are putting together. Then along with um, Echoes of Legends, which is gonna be our Star Wars fan film. Um, so pretty much how I got started with this was I had to find an A-wing A -wing model. Uh, you know, it's, you know, some guys are, are amazing at 3D modeling, building everything in either, you know, Blender or I think uh, Video 3D or something like that. Or uh, there's tons of programs like Unreal Engine to uh, build that stuff and make it look really good. I'm not one of those guys. I'm, I'm a build with my hands kind of guy. And so... Uh, the best stuff that I do is going to be practical, practical effects, uh, building models, painting them. Uh, that actually takes a lot less time and a lot less effort for me to pull that kind of stuff off than it does me sitting behind the computer and really trying to learn and make something look good in something like Blender. And so uh, that's kind of what I came back to after trying those uh, 3D uh, programs and I came back to well I, I need to just build a model that's what I'm good at um, and so <laughs> finding a A-wing model was almost impossible uh, they're like sold out no one everyone wants an X-wing or a TIE fighter and so with our storyline kind of going with you know we want a character in um, Echoes of Legends to have a to use an A-wing uh, it was kind of hard to find one but I ended up finally finding an A-wing on eBay from somewhere from somewhere um and i got it and i got it i still got it here this is after i've kind of duct taped on made my cr extremely crude uh 3d flying device here um but yeah that's pretty much it it came extremely uh even with it just it looked really clean and we know um as far as star wars goes and then just making stuff good, look good on film in general um you don't want it to look necessarily extremely clean and so i took some uh, some old model paints that i had so i got over here um these are stains uh, actually it's not necessarily just a color but um anyway i carefully stroked that stuff on painted that up uh i added a lot more details than what the 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 toy model actually already had um and really made it pop and so that made it look a lot better than what, what I got it for what was it look like on when I go to film it. And um, so after that, I had to let it dry, of course. Um, then I went into the process of taping that uh, 3D, the 3D stick, the little holder um, on there so I could fly it in front of the green screen. And we moved on to filming it in front of the gr green screen. And that's where kind of my first lesson was uh, you need to have a plan. Just like holding it and flying it around makes no sense. You need to have a pretty good idea of what you're doing so I would um, you know it always comes back to the better you storyboard the better you plan uh, the better the shots are gonna look and the better the end results and look so uh, yeah you definitely want to um, know what you're gonna do and really practice and smooth out those flying uh, those flying processes that's that's obviously gonna be a con with models and a pro with 3D is because you can kind of just kind of type in where you want your 3D model to drive or fly. Um, when you do a model, you've got to, uh, you got to act that thing out. You got to puppeteer it. Um, and so 
if there's a higher learning curve there for you, rather than just being able to hit some buttons in a computer, uh, the model is obviously going to lack there. But I think it's going to be something that we can, um, myself, my friends, my team, can uh, wrap our heads around and um, really smooth out that process and take out all those janky like me holding it on a stick. Uh, we're going to develop a better kind of rig system uh, to fly the ship. Um, now, modern day ILM or whatever it's called now, or you know, I don't, I don't think it's ILM anymore. But anyway, the, the guys that are filming the Mandalorian, they use an actual, you know, a model, uh, a miniature, and they, you know, the miniature sits in a cradle and it, you know, banks and rolls and pitches, but the camera itself is what moves around. We can't do that because we don't have uh, enough budget to get the extrusion to make the device that would smoothly move that camera around. And that's, that's what the big factor would be. Um, any little, you know, bump, wiggle, shake, anything like that, you're gonna be able to tell that uh, the camera was messed up and it's in a complete, and then, you know, that works on a minute of angle, uh, for all my shooting friends out there. Um, whenever you hit a bump or something on a camera, it turns into a minute of angle and how far away your model is, that's the bigger jump or move around that it does and distorts and ruins what you're trying to film there. Uh, so we're gonna have to be moving the model, keeping the camera in place. And so uh, our rig, there's a lot, the, the, the error, the window of error for us moving the model is a lot better than the window of error for trying to move the camera around the model. So that's why we're going to have to redevelop something like that. So look for a later episode of Cheap Filmmaking to figure out how we did that cheaply. So yeah, after that, um, we got it all filmed, put it onto the computer, and then we went into editing. So uh, the last episode I was telling you about how I edited it on, edited it, edited it. <laughs> I edited it uh, on, um, I said Photoshop, that was the wrong thing. I edited it on Premiere, and uh, the green screen was all right, but um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good stuff. Uh, to me, if it's not, if I, you know, if it's something I would call out from the couch and be like, eh, that looks like green screen, that's messed up, then it's not good. So that's kind of where I put my level, my bar, so I set that there. Um, and so it looked okay, but it wasn't good when I did it in Premiere. I have known, I've been told, uh, that uh, Adobe After Effects is better for green screening, and so I put it in there. Uh, first thing I did was kind of the classic, I mean, I just started out with a color key and then started masking the big stuff out of that, and it was kind of working, but it kind of looked the same for what I was doing uh, with the green screen stuff before. And so, I mean, eh, it, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So after some digging around, I found a key light, uh, the key light effect that is in um, Adobe After Effects, and it is like a plug and play champ. It does extremely well. Uh, you uh, drag that over on there, and it does a wonderful job. You can go through all those selections on there and just kind of fine tune exactly what you need, and pretty much looked way better than all of that masking going frame by frame. Because uh, so as you can see on here, I don't know if we got to that part yet. I'm kind of playing the, the reel there, but um, uh, at, you're gonna have to go frame by frame if you wanna add, you know, for a lot of effects. And, you know, going frame by frame just to green screen and mask something out isn't what you wanna do. Um, you wanna save that time. Now, working with anything like this, you're going to end up having to work frame by frame. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So. You want to accept that and move on uh, and move into it with just knowing this is going to take time. You know, it's a labor of love. Don't think that you're going to find an easy switch. Now, with uh, a lot of masking kind of stuff, you, there's a lot of trackers that kind of help you out. But I have found that uh, for a lot of the stuff that I've been filming so far, it, the, the, the background, the foreground, the you know, whatever the object is I'm filming in anyway, it's not... It's, it's not really conclusive with those track with the tracking software. Um, I don't know if there's some maybe parameters that I could change to make it work a little better, but it's just saves me a little more time instead of kind of messing with the trackers right now. You just mask it out myself, go frame by frame, move the stuff where I need it, and then it's good to go. Now for this, I also use the uh, Saber. I've, I've been talking up the, the, the video copilot Saber um, uh, uh, effect. Yeah, the, their free effect download for, you know, all things Star Wars. 
and it uh it worked out amazing for uh the engines and of course the uh i used it for the the tie fighter bolts bolts or the tie fighter shots that were coming through um it it worked out really well when it comes to engines i'm just gonna need to what i did on this one was kind of just a single mask uh over the top um of just the the engines themselves and uh you know Obviously, when, when I want that to look good and we take it to a movie level, I'm going to have to use several masks and um, uh, several several kind of designs to make sure that it fits where I want it to. Uh, there's some parts where, I don't know, it, it was just kind of a simple little test, and so I wasn't too worried about it. But uh, it, it looked pretty good for the test. I know that I'm going to be able to use it for when we go bump it up to the movie stuff. It's just going to take a little more time. And I'm going to have to turn it into several layers. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that right there. Um, this is one step closer to our projects. Gone to Texas. making. I'm going to have to build some actual styrene ships because it's an original project. Obviously, we can't go to the store and just buy a model of what we're talking about. Um, so I need to... Um, Really stop uh, procrastinating and get on building those models. <laughs> I've got a lot of them started, but haven't really been continuing on so far. But um, anyway, uh, the, the screen test kind of got us to that next next step up, uh, closer to making these uh, making these films and stuff. So hopefully, sooner than later, I'm uh, rolling them out to you guys. So um, this is it this time, and uh, take care.